Hello. In this lecture presented by www.free-academy.com, we're going to be covering the basic derivative rules. In this, um, we're going in two different ways. Step one, we're going to discuss your basic conditions for derivatives, and then when you can do a derivative, some of the different properties that derivatives have. Now, your basic conditions. You need continuity, and the function needs to be well-defined. What exactly do we mean by this? Well, I can give you three examples that should pretty much explain the bulk of what we're talking about. You are not allowed, for example, of your absolute value function, you cannot find the derivative directly at the point. No points, or no v's. If you have a sharp change in the graph, you can't find the derivative. Another example of this would be if you had a straight line and then all of a sudden it kinks down or it kinks up. You know, at any corners, actually is the term, you cannot find the derivative. Another example is you cannot find the derivative when the function goes to, goes vertically. So if you take like a hyperbola, where the function approaches negative infinity and positive infinity, you can't find the derivative. And that actually goes back to your condition of continuity in this particular situation, because your limit from one side and your limit from the other side are different. And if you, unless the limits are the same, you can't find the derivative, because the function is not continuous. And the third example, and this isn't the best example, but we just put it out there, is you can't find the derivative of points. If you have a graph that just is a bunch of points, you can't find the derivative of those because they have no slope. So that is your basic conditions for finding the derivative. Now, let's talk about some of the different derivative rules once you know that you can find the derivative. The first one, the derivative of a constant, we use c as a constant. The derivative of a constant is always zero. And this can be found simply by expection. If you have a graph and you have a straight line, and the graph of any straight or any constant is a straight line, there's no slope to this. You know, it's always equal to zero anywhere you look at this. So the derivative of a constant, any constant, is always going to be equal to zero. The second rule, if you have the derivative of a constant times a function, this is equal to the constant times the derivative of the function. Simply put, the constant can be pulled out in front of the derivative. And we actually saw some examples of that in, uh, in the previous section where we took the derivative of several functions. Where did my mouse pointer go? Okay, there it is. For example, we found the derivative of f of x equals x squared to be equal to 2x. But then we also found f of x times 3x squared was equal to 6x, which of course is the same as 3 times 2x. And f of x of, I think we found 4x squared at one point, that was equal to 8x, which is of course 4 times x squared. And this always holds up. Even if you have the derivative of like a sine or a cosine function or some complicated like that, the constant always comes out in front. Um, you can drive that yourself doing the definition of the derivative and putting in arbitrary constant. In fact, I think we did that. We did uh, ax squared. We took the derivative of that and found that it was equal to 2ax. So anyways, remember that. The next rule that we're going to cover in this lecture is if you have the derivative of f of x plus g of x. Now this is going to be equal to the derivative of f of x plus the derivative of g of x. You basically multiply the derivative out past the addition. And it's also the same 
in the case of a subtraction. The derivative of f of x minus g of x is equal to the derivative of f of x minus the derivative of g of x. So these are important things to memorize. You're going to be doing them all the time, and you can't ever get tripped up on something this simple either. If you're going to be doing calculus and doing it well, this needs to be like a muscle. You need to exercise it, and you need to make sure every single time you come across something like this, you're just able to do it without even thinking about it, which should be easy enough to do because they're not very complicated. Um, what we'll be covering in the next or in the coming lectures is if you have the derivative of f of x times g of x. This is what's known as the product rule. Then we'll also be covering a similar one, the derivative of f of x divided by g of x. This is equal to the quotient, this is known as the quotient rule. And then we also have the derivative of f of g of x. And that's known as the chain rule. So we'll be covering that in lectures to come, but in the next lecture, we're going to be covering the power rule, which is where if you have the derivative of x to the n. So look for these in the near future.